This program is brought to you by American Graduate, Getting to Work, funded by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Did you know there are good jobs available that don't require a college degree? For nearly two years, WOSU has been part of American Graduate, a nationwide initiative telling people between the ages of 16 and 26 about different paths that can lead to good careers. These in-demand, good-paying jobs require some education beyond high school. It might be a two-year degree, a certificate that could be earned in as little as two months, an apprenticeship, or an internship. In our Rivet podcast series, we visit with students who have taken these paths. Check it out if you're looking for options other than college. A four-year degree is still a great way to prepare for a career, and maybe that's something you'll pursue later, if not right out of high school. But it's always good to know about your options. That's why WOSU partnered with Columbus State for Higher Thinking, How to Get the Career You Want. We invited students from four Central Ohio high schools to hear from students just like them who found their way to good jobs they really like. We also invited leaders from CODA and Nationwide Insurance in Columbus to tell us about the jobs they need to fill. And it turns out there's a lot of them. A lot of people, when you um, ask them, what do you think of when you hear the word CODA, the first word that comes out of their mouth is buses. That's all, they, that's all they know when they see CODA. However, we, do, uh, we are a full service in-house facility. So we fix our vehicles, we do the body work on our vehicles. Um, we, of course, we have the coach operators, we have accounting, we have marketing, we have um, um, planning, people who plan the bus routes. So there's various, and then of course we have a full staff HR department training. So there's a lot of things that go on at CODA many, many opportunities um, for, for really anyone to, um, to pursue. Um, so we're not just buses. So. All right, how about you, Chuck? Um, you know, at Nationwide, it's, it's such a wide variety. You know, I think when people hear that, they think insurance sales, and it's so much more than that. Um, if it's working in marketing and branding, you probably see our commercials on TV and, and know those. Or if it's working in an investment portfolio, we have a trading floor that's on site there and have actual portfolio managers. Um, we have individuals that run our building. So if it's uh, in the maintenance space that you want to go, you know, we hire people in that area. It's call centers, it's service centers, uh, all the corporate functions, you know, if it's finance, human resources. There are just, there's a lot of places you can take your career and go and move around even within the organization. But, you know, it's hard for me to find a career path or a major that couldn't fit somewhere in a large organization like ours. Which is pretty amazing because you don't always think about opportunities open right. like, oh, I'm going to be in a call center if I'm in insurance or who knows, like maybe I have to be a bus driver if I want to work for CODA. So that kind of leads me to the next question is how both of you found out about these opportunities and what kind of snagged you in? And maybe I'll start with Gideon. Okay, so um, in our school we did, um, they actually uh, uh, offered us an internship at Nationwide. And I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I thought I was gonna do network stuff, but I was wrong. We did, uh, there's no accessibility stuff for the websites. So it, I found out from my school. Um, one of my teachers back at Career Center, when he always told me, he's like, man, you're real good at doing all this, like just fixing stuff and everything. He said, I should send you over to CODA. And he introduced me to Tracy, and it just went on from there, of Tracy just bringing me on and introducing me to the team and leading me through the company. It seems like there's things that you both liked, right, in school mm -hmm. that you're able to take to these jobs. You mind talking a little bit more about these skills? So, and it, describing to you what you both do? Okay, so. Me, I've always been good at like just taking stuff apart, putting stuff together since I was a little kid. I always like took everything apart and put it back. And always when I got older, my dad always told me, man, you should try being something like a mechanic, working on jets, planes, cars, like anything. So I went to Fort Hayes to be a, a, body, a body tech, be a body tech and painter and build, put the stuff back together when people got in wrecks or paint it back. So I did that, then I learned to do auto tech and it just went on from there of just doing stuff and getting on the code. Yeah. All right, um, so for me, uh, I like working with computers, but not like taking them apart and putting them back in. <laughs> I like working on the computers. So um, I found uh, myself uh, liking the program when I was actually a little kid. 
and I started learning how to code in the GML, which is not a known language. But then uh, I went to Columbus downtown. They taught me HTML and JavaScript and CSS, and I applied that to uh, Nationwide in fixing the websites. That's really fantastic. So this council speaks to like the different skills that maybe companies are looking for. And that's like another question I have. So Tracy, Chuck, what are the kind of skills you're looking for, and what sticks out about students like Gideon and Ira? Yeah, you know, I think sometimes it's just it's drive, it's the person, you know, and it's about hiring the right people and maybe you know teaching them uh, the skill sets and the technical pieces that they need to do the job. You know, at Nationwide, we look for people that will fit into our culture of caring and really putting our customer and our members first, and people that have that mindset. Um, people that like to give back to the community and volunteer. We'd like to have a big part in, in the community here in Columbus and others where we, where we operate. And so those are some of the important things that we look for. So it's really interesting at CODA because this whole internship piece, piece started due to the, the need for um, automotive techs in an industry where they're losing talent quicker than it's coming into the industry. So we had administrative staff that, you know, figured, you know, let's address a, a, a problem that we're having in terms of filling auto, automotive tech positions. And that's how <clears throat> administration thought, well, okay, well, Fort Hayes has an automotive program. So that's why we focused on the automotive tech positions. Now that we kind of have that, um, that whole automotive piece kind of we have a pipeline where we're getting students from Fort Hayes and we're starting to talk to other career techs in the automotive programs. Now we're starting to think about other career fields. How do we take that same model that we've used for our auto tech collision program and put that into play with other career fields at CODA? So in terms of skill sets that we're looking for, we kind of like to train our own talent. Of course, you should come with some of your own skill sets, but building your own workforce and training individuals how you want them to be is, is pretty crucial, and that's kind of what we're looking to do. That's wonderful, and a lot of this training is taking place for both of you in high school, or it took place, right? Which is kind of incredible, and sort of wild to think about getting to work and doing work while you're still in school. Do you mind talking about your experience, um, maybe working at Nationwide and then at CODA, respectively? All right, so um, working at Nationwide, it was a very great experience. I learned a lot of Hard skills, uh, me talking in front of an audience and just talking in general, and also soft skills, which are JavaScript and uh, HTML. Like, I came into Nationwide knowing a little bit of HTML and how to create websites, but uh, after like the summer, I know how to make like a full blown website, which is really nice. So I think my experience at Nationwide was very great. Yeah, my. Um my experience there, they taught me a lot of hard skills to do in my career, but a lot of soft skills, as Tracy has done, because she taught me how to talk in front of people and get everything and be presentive. But the hard skills, I've never, the guys and the techs there who bring you in, they like bring you under your wing and really show you around the shop and everything you could even do. They show you things you didn't even know an engine or a bus could even do. Which is pretty sweet. And maybe this is like kind of a question that I have for all of you too. Is like, what is the most rewarding part of your jobs? As like when you get into work and ready to go. And we'll start with Chuck at the end again. Oh, geez. There's so many things I, I feel that are rewarding. I, I love the people I work with. I love working for a company with a noble cause. You know, we're here to help people potentially put their lives back together, depending on, you know, what may happen. Uh, you know, from a, an insurance claim, if a hurricane rips through, and from a financial services, you know, we're trying to help people prepare and live in retirement, and those just feel noble to me, and it gives me pride to go to work that, you know, that's what our product is, and so uh, those things jump out at me, and, and like I said, I, I, I love the individuals I work with because they have the same mindset of putting that customer first, mm -hmm and knowing anybody we talk to or touch could be a potential nationwide customer, right? We talk to lots of candidates every day and we need to make sure that we're treating them right with the right respect uh, and follow up because they might be a customer of Nationwide. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, to piggyback what uh, Chuck said, working with people was very rewarding for me because I learned a lot from not just uh, the people I work with, but the other people 
that are working in different departments. So that's, again, a lot of knowledge, which that's also a reward. And then finishing my work with that knowledge that the people gave me is also a reward. So yeah, I think that uh, the people there are, is, is a great reward. For me, it is the people. Um, I love who I work with. I love coming to work every day. But we have a new motto at CODA that um, before it came out, you know, I was kind of thinking, you know, what, what would be, you know, what is it that I want to think about when I think about coming to work? Or what is it that, you know, makes me feel like I want to be motivated to do more, to help people, to, um, to just, you know, get everyone involved? And so we have this new motto at CODA. It's called Moving Every Life Forward. And when you think about moving every life forward, you think about everyone. You think about your customers, you think about your colleagues, you think about everyone that you come in contact with. So for me, that motto has kind of changed the way, you know, that I think about things. It's like, when I'm working on something, when I'm working on a project, when I'm working with the students, when I'm working with my colleagues, that motto just rings in my mind, like moving every life forward. So whatever I can do to move to do that, that's what I like to do. And one of the biggest satisfactories for me is like, you know, coming into work, there's a bus there that came in broken and you were able to turn it around and get it back out and works correctly, it works good, and it will go out that day and take anybody, someone's mom, sister, dad, and get them where they need to go safely so that they may continue their life forward. That's big. There's a lot of impact as well on, it, on different people's lives. Yeah. So one last question before we open it up to question and answer. Um, if there's somebody maybe who is, you know, in a high schooler's shoes right now thinking about different careers, what's just like one line, this is tough, but one line of advice that you might give somebody who's just interesting in moving forward and kind of trying to pursue their interests, whatever those might be? You know, this is probably the cliche answer, but don't let anybody tell you you can't do something. Um, you can be a high schooler that works at Nationwide. You know, you can be a mechanic that works at CODA. I mean, you know, the sky is the limit. It's just, it's not a bunch of fluff. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to speak from the heart here. It's just, you know, I, I remember growing up and it's like, oh, that's probably not the right path and you can't do this and you can't do that. And, you know, and I, I took a path and went to the community college in Dayton, Ohio and uh, transferred to Ohio University. And there were a lot of people who didn't think I would be able to go to college and I did. And now I work at Nationwide and, and have a career. That's just my advice. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. Uh, same thing what uh, Tug said, don't let anybody uh, ruin your chances. If you have a goal that you want to set, you should go towards that goal and don't let any other people ruin that goal for you. Like, uh, if you want to be a singer, then go ahead and be a singer. Just don't let anybody change that. And I think that's uh, my advice that I want to give people. And kind of keeping it along with the same lines, explore your options. Don't feel as if you're, that you have to do one thing. Sometimes doing several things will lead into one thing and it makes you a more well-rounded individual. So if I could say anything to you, just keep your options open. If you hit a brick, ball, brick wall, think of something else. Just keep moving forward. Um, and the biggest thing I could say to like follow everybody else is like take that leap of faith. Don't just be scared to do something. Just step out and do it. And if you run into failure, don't stop just because of failure, because failure will always just teach you a way to lead to success. I feel like I can make a poster out of all of these different <laughs> bits of advice. So thank you, everybody. That's great. I think that that's what we're trying to do, too, with this forum is give a whole bunch of different options, not saying that like you should change your path, but giving you more power to pick what you want to do. So now we want to open it up for question and answers from students. Hi, my name is Haley, and I was wondering how do you as employers feel about tattoos? Not a, a lot of people have tattoos that nationwide. So it's, you know, I think times have changed, you know, as it relates to that. I think, you know, 20 years ago, you know, I think people would try to hide them or cover them up with clothing. And I just, you know, even a, a, an insurance company like ours, we, you know, we let people, you know, people wear jeans every day to work and things of that. I think a lot of that is leveled out. I've faced as a person, I've came to discriminatory employers. So for me to speak to you as an employer and not face discrimination, that gives us a lot of reassurance that sure. we can be unique as to, to everyone in here. We're unique as a person. So thank you to an employer for doing that for us.
what was the most challenging part to get to where you are now? Like, what challenged you the most? I guess I'll answer that question there. Um, so um, the most challenging part is just like jumping out your comfort zone and having all these people judge you, be like, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. But and if you know that you can do it inside of you, then you can do it. If you just have a goal and you want to meet that goal, then like um, I said, he, um, you can just do a leap of faith and you will get there. Um. I guess I could say the most challenging part would just be time and just just how long it takes sometimes to do certain things. It'd be the most challenging thing. You mean like fixing fixing yeah. a bus or like just kind of moving through your day, kind of. Sometimes you gotta wait for different things like parts or different people to approve stuff and everything. So it's just time and waiting around on stuff. Uh, hello, my name is Noah Robertson and. I was gonna ask, like, what grade did you start this in? Did you start in like your, your senior year? Oh, so I started uh, going to my senior year is when I started working at Nissan Y. Um, I started going to school to be an automotive tech my junior year, but I didn't start at Coda until actually my senior year. Does it have to like for the employers? Does it have to be used like your senior year, or what are the rules like with internships or? Um, from my experience from Fort Hayes, a lot of the internships were like senior year kind of programs and stuff, but I think there's a couple of like junior year stuff. Yeah, so um, in Columbus downtown, uh, we actually offered it to the juniors first. So then, um, so I was a junior going to my senior year, so yeah, they offered it to the juniors and the seniors. All right, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> That was a great question. Just to quickly, oh, we have one more over here. Great, thanks. My name is Bryce Knowlton. I go to Hamilton. I'm a senior. Um, what was, how did you guys juggle work and school at the same time? Um, well, for me, on my senior year when I went to Coda, I only had like three classes in the morning. So I had about the three classes and an hour, two hours in between from school and going to work. So I could do in between, run to the library or something and get some work done and then go to work. And then afterwards, I just finish some work at night or wait till the next morning and do it. Yeah, so um, I end school at 1.40 instead of uh, 2.30, which most schools end at. So I just go to work. Uh, I only work three hours each day for three days. So after five, I go home and I do my work and I finish it. And I, I give it to them the next day and then this repeats. <laughs> <laughs> Those were awesome questions. Oh, want to do one? Can we do one more? One time? Cool. Uh, my name is Fura Salam. I'm a senior. I'm from Westerville North. Um, is there anything you've done like differently to get to where you are now? I guess the only thing differently for me, I'll say that I didn't go to college. At least not yet. <laughs> I'll probably uh, say that uh, I let other people, the words that other people say get into me, so that kind of affected me. But after I learned that like, it's not what, what other people think, it's what you think inside, now it's just it's okay now. So. Thank you. Yeah. Those were, like I said, awesome questions, and we're really grateful for our panel for coming. So can we give them a round of applause? They did awesome. Thank you. So we're gonna have a short break before our next panel and we're gonna show a video here. We're at Columbus State, which is a big resource for folks who are looking to get into the working world. And we wanted to show a short feature, which um, is an interview with Erica Miller, who was a graduate from the Electromechanical Engineering program here. And the program helped her follow her path to success and a job. So we're gonna cue that up, get it rolling, and then we'll start the second panel in just a second. Thank you, guys. I'm Erica Miller, we're here at Stanley Electric in London, Ohio, where I work, and I graduated from Columbus State with a degree in Electromechanical Engineering Technologies. Welcome to Stanley. I'm a maintenance technician. 
I work on the machines that produce our lighting at Stanley. So screw machines, all the robots. Our facility does most of our production for Honda. We make headlights and taillights and then we have other lighting, such as like the little light that goes for your license plate. Troubleshooting is essentially problem solving, getting down to what's wrong with the machine. We have a rough idea of what's going on. We ask the operators and the people around the machine that run it every day what's going on. And then from there we can trace down the problem to what exactly is happening and why it's happening. Sometimes it's not returning back to the original position, sometimes um, something gets stuck. And then if it's a reoccurring problem, we obviously haven't traced it down far enough. So we'll go back later and try to troubleshoot even more and get to the absolute root cause. Through Columbus State, we've had other girls graduate in the electromechanical program. I'm the first one that went through the co-op program and graduated with the degree and the co-op experience. So there was a little bit more pressure on me to actually continue and finish my co-op experience. Don't get discouraged. There's definitely a spot out there for you. And you just have to find out where that spot is. And if you have an interest in it, go to one of these two-year colleges and take a course or two. You'll find out pretty quick if it's something you enjoy or not. And if it's something you enjoy, you can make a career out of it. There's so many jobs out there right now that are hiring and looking for employees, especially in the central Ohio area. Erica, it's great to see you. We're here a year and a half later at Stanley Electric, and you have some really good news. I got a promotion, so I'm now a Tech 2 instead of a Tech 1. Technician 1 is a lot of figuring out what's going on, and then Technician 2, you pretty much have a good idea of what's going on, and then you're training the Tech 1s and helping them out as they need it, and then it just progresses up the line. Here at Stanley, we have five Tech levels, so I'm on the second one. I've got several more to go and then as the tech levels increase you get more and more knowledge and more and more responsibility with that knowledge and as you move up with the tech levels salary increases a little bit each time. Thinking back on your education and your experience at Columbus State in the electromechanical engineering program right mm -hmm. what was the biggest takeaway that you took into this new job? Through the co-op program you spend a year taking full-time classes at Columbus State it's evident real fast if this is something you're going to like or not because you take a lot of engineering classes really quickly to try to get you through. It's three work days and two school days, so that's five days a week. At what point in your co-op experience were you certain this is what I want to do? To be honest, it took several months. I was very questioning when I first started up at Honda. I was in a department full of men and I worked mostly with guys that were my dad's age because by the time they get the first shift they have to have seniority. They saw me as a kid because for most of them I was their kid's age. I got a little bit more confident with what I was doing and the people on first shift started to really accept that more. If somebody in your field or maybe they don't even know they want to go into this field yet but they're kind of interested and they like to work with their hands and they're really excited about kind of tinkering with things like you were, mm -hmm. what would you tell them about a possibility like in this field? This is definitely a growing field, you know, we're getting more and more industry in central Ohio, Amazon's moving, all sorts of different companies are converging. It's not just Honda suppliers anymore, there's all sorts of food and automotive and you need some experience to get your foot in the door often. So getting that degree, getting that certificate, getting experience at a company you know, that's helpful. The co-op program is great because it gets you a year's experience with a very reputable company. What is it that keeps you coming to work every night and keeps you motivated? There's definitely some troubleshooting and stuff that I really enjoy. I like the problem solving. I like looking at a situation and going, okay, why isn't this working? What's wrong with this? No day is ever the same. You know, you come into different issues, you come into different problems, and working through those and figuring out how to solve them is really fun. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in five years? So I hope to progress up the levels here at Stanley, and I'm not sure where I'll be in five years. I probably won't be a Tech 5, but hopefully above a Tech 2. Erica, this has been wonderful. Thanks for meeting with me again a year and a half later, and best of luck to you. Thank you. All right, we're back. That was good. 
so that video just kind of gives us a sense of different pathways that maybe do include college, like a two-year degree, uh, to get you to where you want to go, which is also us trying to reiterate, we're not saying anything about, um, anything negative about a four-year degree, we're just saying there are other options. And I just wanted to quickly mention, I was talking to Ira after our last panel, um, and how he was mentioning, yeah, I guess I didn't go to college, but CODA also offers to pay um, for college education, so a lot of companies do that as well, and maybe that's something we can get into in this panel, because it's really, this panel is a lot about ways companies are helping students really move on, and, and we actually have a panelist here who's worked on his four-year degree right now. Yeah. Um, so I'll start by having Scott introduce yourself, and then we'll work our way down again. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Scott McLemore. I'm manager of talent acquisition for Honda. Uh, I've been with the company 29 years, and um, I manage our recruiting team that hires all of the professional um, and technical positions for here in central Ohio, um, as well as down in the south and southeast for Honda. Um, one of those roles that I'll talk much more about is the equipment service technician role. So that role is one where those associates maintain uh, the production and manufacturing equipment within our production facilities. So I'm just real honored to be here and I, and I want to thank WOSU for putting on this event today. So my name is Angelo DeMary. Uh, I've been kind of in contact with Columbus State about their work study program, the same one you saw Erica was in, for about six years now. Um, I went to, when I graduated high school, I went here to Columbus State and had the pleasure of going through the work study and landing a job with a company called Allied Mineral Products stationed in uh, Hilliard. And I ended up getting a full-time position working for them for several years, or a year, sorry. And it was through there I was able to get my two-year degree with them helping to pay while paying me while I was working for them, and now I'm working towards my four-year degree here at Columbus State from Miami. Hi, my name is Vanessa Jester, and I'm with Turner Construction, and I'm a workforce development manager, and that is a fairly newly created position for Turner for this specific reason, to bring high recognition to apprenticeship training and skills training tracks to bring people into the construction industry. So, so honored to be here and thank you for having this. I'm Laurel Bailey. I uh, went to Fort Hayes Career Center and took welding. I am now a local 189 union apprentice. I'm a second year and um, I work for Limbach. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you everybody for joining. Um, just to kind of get started, we haven't talked about this that much yet in the program, but there's a lot of stigmas against different industries and industries that really have a lot of jobs and need. And I think that there are some of manufacturing as being a place where maybe you're just doing the same thing over and over again. Same with construction. Do you mind if we just kind of go down and whoever wants to speak to this first and say, what do you actually, what do these jobs actually look like? And how does that fight against these stigmas? Uh, I guess I'll start. Um, so. Contrary to what you were just saying, the reason I ended up choosing to go down this path and get uh, a maintenance technician job was the fact that I didn't want to be doing the same thing over and over again. The fact is, when you're a maintenance tech, you know, you're in charge of either a section of plant or perhaps maybe, depending on the size of your company, you're in charge of a, like almost the whole plant with a group of, a team of people. And your job is usually to run daily inspections on whatever, all kinds of uh, equipment and machinery you're in charge of as well as get uh, anything that might not be working up the standards or broken down back into a working order so that it can keep production going and stuff. And that every day looks differently. You never know what your day might look like going into work that day. To, to add to that, um, just question, show of hands, those that have been in a manufacturing facility anywhere here. Okay, so not quite half. Uh, so for those of you that haven't been in one, um, it's not dark, dirty, or dangerous. Um, like Angelo said, it, uh, there's a lot of innovative equipment. So uh, you might hear about robotics. Um, there are a lot of different types of robots within manufacturing doing all different kinds of things. Um, there's conveyance where we're moving parts and product from one location to another, whether that's a lift or whether that's some type of conveyor system. Um, different types of electronic systems for monitoring, uh, different types of mechanical pieces of equipment. So what's interesting about manufacturing now is that all of those things have become integrated. 
um, and it's, it's changing the technology. You heard Dr. Harrison talk about how the jobs are changing now. Um, a lot of that is based on the technology. And so in manufacturing, um, there's all different kinds of uh, pieces of equipment that have been brought together um, to produce the product, in our case, um, automobiles here in central Ohio, um, that really make it exciting. And uh, we need people like, uh, young people like Angelo to come in and help us with that um, technical know-how uh, develop and troubleshoot the equipment that we have. So um, it's just really exciting. And unfortunately, not enough people get to see what it looks like inside the production facility. So I'll go ahead for construction. We're really trying to get out there and get the word that is um, an opportunity for everyone. It's not just, it's been a stigma that it's not a tie to, tr to education and training and you should go to college. There are so many career opportunities tied to the apprentice skilled trades that we have going on. We cannot build, we, we are in a construction boom right now. And it's predicted by 2024, our industry will be short nearly 24,000 people. And that's just in central Ohio. And construction is not only just, you know, slinging a hammer or, or out there with your hands. It is about your hands. It is about building, but it's about pride. It's education tied to it. You'll, you'll go to, to apprenticeships for four years leading to journeyman positions. It's just great pay great benefits, and if you like to give back to your community, there's no better way than to go out to build a structure and to be able to ride by it in about 10 years and said, I contributed to that building. I put my heart, I put my passion into that building. And it's a great feeling, and so we just wanna really get out there and spread the word. Going off on that, um, I think a lot of people, when they think of construction, they think of new builds instead of um, buildings that have already been created and we're just doing like maintenance work on them and just replacing things that are broken and um, then also like I'm a construction worker but I'm also getting a college education out of it and I think a lot of people kind of miss that. Yeah and do you mind on expanding that like okay let's talk about apprenticeships for a second and then we'll also kind of move into like where you're going Angelo with your degree as well um, but you are doing like college level math. Yes. So. Um, we have class every other week for eight and a half hours. And um, it depends on what we're doing. Like right now we're doing hydronics and so we're learning uh, about boilers and chillers and all that kind of stuff. And so um, doing that this year, we're getting college credit for it. And yeah. And a big thing is, I have to ask this, are you getting paid while you're doing this too? <laughs> like um, I do not get paid for going to school, but I do get paid like throughout the week for everything else that I do, so. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, so the way it works with Columbus State and their work study program is they want to set it up so that you're going to school while working and that that reinforces one another. So you'll typically, the way they like to set it up is you have three days set aside for work and two days set aside for school and you schedule your classes around that. And all the classes here at Columbus State, they're not your typical, this is the theory of what's happening. They tried their best. We have whole lab rooms full of trainers here to get you as close to possible to what it might look like out on the job so that they can reinforce that before and while you're working at your job. And of course, the, the internship you get via the work study is a paid internship, so then you can get your degree uh, usually debt-free, as I was able to get my two-year degree without any debt. And some companies will even support you for your four-year, and that's an amazing opportunity to be able to get your degree without any debt. And it's, a, the, it's a great opportunity. The Columbus State model is one uh, that Honda uh, partners in. It's a great opportunity for employers to see if uh, those students are a good fit for, for us, right? Um, uh, they're working with us for a full year. Um, like Angela said, they're paid. Um, that the amount of that, of that salary that they earn offsets, maybe more than offsets, the tuition uh, that th those students are paying at Columbus State. Um, but it also gives that student an opportunity to know whether this is right for them. Uh, so like Erica um, and Angelo, uh, they can see if that's the right environment, um, if that's the right culture. Uh, so that was, I think, talked about a little bit on, in the first panel, um, what that environment is like working. Um, and the challenges, is it what you expected to do? 
Um, the other thing about that is, and I, I think we're going to talk more about this, is it's the beginning of your career, right? It's, it's a pathway, and you're, that, that opportunity can take you in all different kinds of directions. Um, I'll use myself as an example. Like I mentioned, I work for Honda now 29, going on 30 years. Um, I started as an engineer in the Marysville Auto Plant almost 30 years ago. And if someone would have told me back then that I'd be sitting on this stage as the manager of talent acquisition, I wouldn't believe it. So I've had lots of different opportunities that I didn't even know were coming. I had opportunity to go to Japan. Um, I've had opportunities to lead different um, HR and technical teams. So you never know uh, what, what you know, your, your career might look like. Um, so it's just the beginning. And uh, I just want to emphasize that with the students and those of you that are looking at opportunities. Uh, things are wide open for you if, if you take advantage of, of the opportunities that are put in front of you. No, I think that's great. I'm going to steal that and piggyback off of that a little bit and use that to ask both of you where you got started, which you already kind of mentioned, and then your path currently and where you see yourself kind of going from there. Okay, yeah. So, it, it, and it is really, I was thinking just the same thing he was talking about, about taking opportunities, because uh, it's very much, that's something that a lot of people, uh, sorry to go off on a little tangent here for a second, but a lot of people don't, they see a lot of opportunities around them, but some of them they, they underestimate. They say that might not be worth it because it seems like it's a small output for the opportunity. But you should take it anyways because it can lead to even more opportunities that lead to just bigger and bigger and better opportunities. So, and that was very much the case for me. I went to high school and I was fortunate to have some engineering in my high school. And so I took it because it seemed interesting to do it. And it was there that actually, coincidentally, uh, Scott and a person from so Columbus State happened to come when I was a freshman and mentioned I could do the work-study program. And from there, I realized I wanted to do that, and I pushed towards doing that. And then when I graduated high school, I went to Columbus State. I did that. I landed a job that ended up giving me a full-time position with a two-year degree with zero debt, and now I'm working towards a four-year degree. It's the small things that can lead in exponentially into those bigger, great opportunities. So for me, I took welding in high school for my junior and senior year at a career center. And um, during my senior year, my teacher came to me. He said, hey, you can do this program called the pilot program where you can go to work for one week and then go to school the next week and just flip flop in between that. And so I did that with the, the company I'm with now, Limbach. And um, I got paid to go to work, and that was really nice, and uh, just continued doing school. And then after that, I tested into the union, and now I'm a second year apprentice. Great. And do you mind talking a little bit about what happens after you go through your apprenticeship? Okay, so um, the apprenticeship is five years long, and after you come out of it, you are a journeyman. And so you're making um, a little over $38 an hour, I believe, and that's just on the check. And then um, there's other things that you can go into, like you can become a foreman, you can try to become like a supervisor, you can get more certifications. There's a lot of ways that you can go with it. That's great. Thank you both for sharing that experience. And I think this speaks to also a question I have to, for Scott and Vanessa. And this is something we were talking about in creating this event, is what do you look for in candidates? And let's say you had somebody with this work-study experience or this Fort Hayes experience versus somebody with a four-year degree. Like, where do each benefit? You know, what talents do each bring to that potential mm -hmm. position? Uh, so for us at Honda, um, we're very much interested in um, candidates that have uh, applied knowledge, applied skills with that knowledge, um, whether they're uh, two-year uh, technical students, two-year degree students, or whether they're four-year degree students. Um, we're looking for those that um, understand how to apply the knowledge that they've learned in the classroom. Um, with that, uh, we're also interested in those that um, are, uh, have good learning agility. So what, we mean, what I mean by that is um, they're inquisitive and they, they want to understand how things work or how to apply that knowledge. Um, how to learn new things, um, and then those that want to work in a team. Um, I think that's important for us uh, as a lot of our, uh, mo all the areas that are at Honda are those in which you have um, individual contributors that at times have to function as a team to get something done. So those are the, the qualities and, and attributes that we're looking for. So for Turner, we are, like I said, my position is very, very unique. So. 
when we are looking at it's not just for ours, our positions, it's for our trade partners. So our partners like Limbach that's out there really trying to help us to build we are really looking for candidates that are interested in coming into the skilled trades. So if you have not decided what you want to do, if you like to work with your hands, if you're a decision maker, if you're a team player, if you have a passion, those are the type of people that we're looking for to really come into the trades. Um, construction, there's various ways that you can come into it. Apprenticeship, the two-year college route, and the traditional four-year college route. Um, our push and our focus right now, because the, the gap is so large, is the apprenticeship model. Um, and when you come in that way, as Scott said, there are various ways to um, kind of guide your career path once you come in. Our person that our executive, our project executive out at the Facebook project right now, started out in the apprentice trades as, a carp as an electrician and worked his way up. And so there is a path that once you're done with your, your journeyman and you've, outwork, you've been out working and building, you can change career tracks. You can come into the office and be part of construction management process. So a passion, a passion for building, teamwork and commitment is what we really look for. If I could add to that, um, something that Ira mentioned in the first panel I think is important um, for those that want to be technicians at Honda, and that's um, uh, taking chances and making mistakes uh, because that's the way that you learn. And I know that our hiring managers that are in the um, equipment maintenance role and in that area are looking for uh, students and candidates that are willing to take those types of chances um, because if you're one that's afraid to try to do the analysis on the floor when the production equipment is broken down, um, then you're less likely to be successful in the future, even if you make a mistake, because they all make mistakes. Um, even the hiring manager, or even the managers, the supervisors, have made mistakes in that role at one time or another. But if, if you're afraid um, to take those chances and test yourself, then you might not be as successful as someone that's willing to take those chances. Yeah, I think that's like a good point to take those chances and allow yourself room for that movement. Also, I think you all brought up a really good point about the idea we have another stigma against these careers is that they're dead end, they don't really lead anywhere, and you're, there's so much movement that all of you are showing, which I think it's really important to mention. Um, just a general question is, and this is kind of broad, but if you were to give yourself advice, maybe at in high school, back thinking back at the beginning of high school, about something you'd do differently or do the same, what would that be? Network and get to know people. When you are in um, rooms like this, shake a hand, be a friend, introduce yourself. Um, I would say to the early me, never miss an opportunity, shake a hand, make a friend. I would say keep your options open and um, don't close any doors, look into a little bit of everything, figure out what you like, and run with it. So uh, I guess the best words to put it in was to be like what they, uh, they were talking about on the first panel was uh, just about being uh, afraid to take those risks and being afraid to like uh, kind of step out and, and really push yourself to take that knowledge you have because like I said, it's a very misconception. There's a lot of people think that if you just get the, the smarts and you have the knowledge that that's all it really takes to do these jobs. And more than the knowledge, it really just takes the willingness to do it because a lot of companies can teach you what you need to know at the job. It's really about are you willing to take that knowledge and actually apply it. Um, can I say two things? Is that sure, fair? that's allowed. Um, since, since I have to go back a long ways. Uh, so one is the confidence. Um, I, I, um, I, would, I would tell my younger self to have more confidence um, and, and challenge myself that way. The other thing is um, taking ownership uh, of your learning, um, of your work, everything that you do. Um, I think the sooner one learns to take ownership of uh, the things that they should own um, about themselves, um, how they present themselves, how they interact with others, how they get the work done, um, and, and be real about that, uh, the better off and more successful one would be. These are all really wise words. Thank you all for being so honest and open about these different careers. 
And can we just give our panelists a round of applause real quick? Great. That was awesome. And now we want to open it up for questions and answers, or yeah, questions and answers again, a little Q&A. I'm actually very interesting, um, interested in construction. So I know you're a person of power and influence, so can I get a job? <laughs> I will say this, I have a card right there on the table. And come over and see me right, at, right afterwards. Shake a hand, be a friend. See, I told you. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name's Cheryl Cooper. I'm at the Columbus Downtown High School. I know we always talk about career centers being college ready as well. What do the companies offer? Do you have like tuition reimbursement? Or can you tell us a little bit how that works? So um, I can speak for Honda. Um, yes, we have tuition reimbursement um, for those that are working full time for us. Um, I don't know all the particulars about um, for how long you have to be there, but um, the way it works for us is you take the courses, so you pay for the courses yourself up front, and then Honda reimburses you once you meet eligibility, uh, certain grade point average, and it has to be the coursework has to be applicable to roles that we have. So those are kind of general, generally how it works for us. And it's basically the same for Turner. We do offer college um, reimbursement for full-time um, associates, and it does have to be in a field that is um, approved by Turner. So usually like engineering, construction management, and things of those. Nature. So the reason I ask, a lot of our students do go to college even mm -hmm. though they are at a career center. So I'm trying to get everyone to look at alternatives to how you can get your college paid for, which we know is very expensive. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Yeah, well, right. And, and like he, uh, he was saying, it varies company to company when it comes to tuition reimbursement as a full-time employee after the work study program. But keep in mind, and if you get with any company here through Columbus State via the work study, you are getting paid during that time. And depending company to company, that should, with prices here at Columbus State, pay for at least your two-year degree if you're staying completely on track with courses. So it's usually tuition reimbursement with companies afterwards is focused on continuing that uh, education further. And I know the local 189 will, um, you get 36 credit hours through the apprenticeship program to begin with. And then after that, you can get the extra 24. And um, I know if you get like C's, I think, or above, they will fully reimburse you. And then that's for the two-year degree. And then for the four-year, um, I think they do the same thing if you have the correct grade point average. And that's a great way. I mean, it's again, these are ways of avoiding debt. We hear a lot about college debt and how many st students, especially in Ohio, is one of the top states where people come out with a lot of college debt. So this is a way of avoiding it, which is awesome, too. Any last questions from here? If not, I have an important question. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I do have a question, I, and I forgot to ask this before, but what is your favorite part of the job? Because this is always my favorite thing to ask. <laughs> you know, that's kind of a hard question, but, but I, I kind of, I would start it when we started with our first question about why did I, you know, I said I went into this because I wanted to have, I didn't want to be sitting doing the same thing over and over again like the misconception is that that's what you do. That's, that's really not what you do. Every day is sort of a different day and you're always going out there to try and do as much as possible and see what you can do. It's a very, it's a very uh, active and very uh, ex explosive, I guess not explosive the word, but it's a very exciting job to have. You know, you're constantly push, challenging yourself and, cha and working with your teammates to to really think outside the box and, and come up with great and interesting strategies to get done what you need to done as fast and as efficient as possible. And so I just enjoy that. I enjoy going out and really putting myself to the test. I would say um, the best part of my job is not necessarily when I'm at work. It's maybe when I'm at the grocery store and someone comes up to me and says, hey, I'm in construction now, it's five years later, and this is what I'm doing, and that's, that happens quite often. Um, I've been with Turner just over two years now, but helped on a construction project about 10 years ago, and I have so many of those stories where people made decisions and it changed their lives. So it's at that moment that I'm like, ah, this is why I do it. So I, that's the best part. Um, two things. I like that now I'm at home and I can see um, stuff that's going on in my house and 
I know how to work on the stuff that's in there now. So I think that's really, really nice. Now I don't have to always like go pay someone a whole bunch of money when I know how to do it myself. Do you have a card, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I need, some, um, I, need some help. I need some help at my place. Right. Um, then the second thing is, is um, from Fort Hayes and then also in the union now, um, I'm learning how to weld. And I'm an artistic person outside of the construction trades. So it's really cool to like learn how to weld and I can do like artistic stuff with like this knowledge that I'm learning as well. Yeah, it's not all about jobs either. It's kind of like about what we do in our free time, what we like to do. It's helping us to get a job to do what we like to do as well. So two things for me. Um, one, when I was an engineer a long time ago, uh, it's what Angelo mentioned. I had the opportunity to work on many different things, be involved in different groups, new model, um, weldability, all different kinds of neat aspects of manufacturing. Um, I love technology. That's what took me to Honda. I, I told people uh, a couple weeks ago, I'm not a car guy. So it was all about manufacturing, all about technology. That's what got me into engineering, and that's what brought me to Honda. Um, secondly, now, I didn't mention, but part of what I do um, in the, my area of passion is uh, collaborating to develop these pathways that we're talking about. So workforce development um, is, is very important uh, to Honda, but also to me personally, and, and I find a lot of satisfaction in the collaborations with Columbus State and other great partners to um, expand the pathways that we have within manufacturing, but also looking to provide other opportunities and other pathways uh, for the young people in Central Ohio. So that's what I like to do. Do you, have any, do you have any advice for somebody that's unsure about their career path? Um, well, so there's a, when we give a, when you come here to Columbus State, and I think he talked about it uh, earlier in the panel, is that, you know, going through this and doing this, this work study, it's very much the beginning and it's a way for you to see if this is what works for you. And the Columbus State has a lot of companies that partner in this work study, a lot of different companies and a lot of different environments that are very, they're very different from one another. So you may like something here or maybe not like it there and you can always switch around and see what works best for you, what you're gonna go for. Because once you have that, that work study, that's a, that's a year of experience and companies will look at you for that and you can always move on and try somewhere else if that partner, company you partnered with wasn't for you. That's about it. I think that's a great point. It's like you don't have to feel like you're stuck. It's like, all right, I made this decision. Now I have to go through this pathway for the rest of my life. It's like there's so much room to just jump to something else. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. OK, everybody give yourself a round of applause. Those were fabulous questions. And now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Harrison. One more round of applause for this great panel. So look at this as the start of a conversation. I love the Q&A. Uh, let's keep that going here, uh, but also when you get back to school. I mean, this really was designed to stimulate some thinking uh, and to help you understand that there may be different pathways than, than what you've considered. Different pathways. That's what higher thinking is all about. There's no single way to get a good job. And a good way to learn about young people finding different career pathways is to listen to WOSU's Rivet Podcast. Here's three stories that show what our Rivet Podcast is all about. My name is Donovan McIntosh. I'm 28 years old, and I'm in the Goodwill CompTIA A Plus program. You learn about hardware, software, how to troubleshoot. There's a lot eight hours a day from nine to four. Three months in total, and you do a boot camp before this, you gotta commit to it like it's a day job. To actually complete your CompTIA A plus um, certification, you have to pass two tests, the 901 and the 902. Studying is really fundamental, that's what pays off. These certificates will lead to a wider range of certificates and you would just have to specialize in a certain area like networking or security and go down that path. You gotta learn how to cut out the things you don't need to get the things you want. And that's what Building Futures is all about. It helps the kids realize that it's a need for trades. 
You know, you, you, you're doing a service to yourself by learning something you can use for yourself regardless if you're working or not. The main thing in the trades is to know how to read a tape measure. You can read a tape measure, you can do so much. The rule is measure twice, cut once. So, you know, you always double check yourself, your work come out good, and have pride about your work. Four or five years, you're a journeyman, making 1000 to $1,500 a week. You can afford to pay for your family, school, anything else you need. It's, I think it's personally better than taking on $100,000 in loans and having to worry about paying that back for the rest of your life. Youth of USA started in Harlem in the 70s to help inner city students who were failing and getting lost in the system. From there, they were able to create a grant through the Department of Labor and Youth Build Columbus was one of the first grantees in the state of Ohio. We're a career tech high school. We teach construction, STNA. So it's something for kids who aren't going to college, something where they can transfer out of high school directly into a career. This particular group, most of these students haven't even seen, touched these tools that we used on this project. We came in, like each step, he like, showed us how to do it walked us through it, and he let us do it. He was like real hands-on, like we, we got to build the house instead of just watching. My favorite step of the job was hanging the drywall. Um, what we mostly had to do was measurements, of course. Everything's out of square, so it took a little bit more time, but as you can see, we got it done. Keep learning more about Pathways to Careers by subscribing to and listening to our Rivet podcast at wosu.org slash American Graduate or wherever you get your podcasts. And you can find more information at wosu.org slash American Graduate. Good luck to you as you make your path to the career you want.